Hey guys, Brazzle the Gamer. Uh, this is uh, the second episode of Palette Swap, and today we're going to be looking at Contra. This is a game that, um, honestly, I didn't play a whole lot as a kid. Uh, a lot of my friends really liked it, but I was just never into like the military shooter type thing. I don't know. Um, playing it again as an adult, I really like the game now, and uh, I pop it in quite often to play it. Contra's really cool. And since everybody else seems to be doing a Contra video right now, I figured, hey, let's take a look at the NES version and the arcade. One. Obviously, the graphics are pretty different between the NES and arcade version. The arcade version looks pretty good, but not quite amazing in my opinion. The colors are a bit washed out in some places. The NES version has an iconic 8-bit look that a lot of people remember very well. I actually like the NES background graphics quite a lot more, though the arcade character sprites do look better. Two. The stages in the NES version are longer than the arcade version. I'm not really sure why this would be, but it definitely makes the NES version more of a challenge. I wish I had more information on why the stages are longer in the NES, but alas, I don't. Sorry! Three. In Contra for the NES, losing all your lives brings you to a black game over screen if you are playing a one player game. You have three continues, and you have to start the stage you died on from the beginning. In the Contra Arcade version, your screen will just freeze with a game over counter, allowing you to continue right from where you left off. No matter how many credits you have, you can still only continue a limited number of times before the game forces you to start over. I'd say that this makes it a bit easier, but I still had problems beating the game despite being able to continue from where I last died. Four. Between each stage on the NES, you get an intro screen that tells you the name of the stage, and shows you how many lives you have left. This is pretty common in NES titles from the era. You don't get these screens between stages on the arcade version of the game. You just start right at the next stage. Five. On Contra for the NES, Stage 5 The Snowfield, Stage 6 Energy Zone, Stage 7 The Hangar, and Stage 8 Aliens Lair are all split up, with their own bosses and obvious endpoints. But these stages are all smooshed together in the arcade game. These blend together into one super stage instead. This doesn't really make a difference in the arcade version due to how continues are handled. Pick. The NES Stage 5 boss appears at the very beginning of the stage as a floating personnel carrier in the arcade. On the NES, it shoots out little flying saucers, while short little soldiers jump out of it in the arcade. This guy is actually a lot easier in the NES version. He's utter chaos in the arcade. Look at all those enemies! The giant boss dude that throws spiky discs at you at the end of Stage 6 on the NES shows up twice in the arcade version. He shows up at what is the end of stage 5, and at the end of stage 6. I think this guy seems a bit easier in the arcade because he doesn't really rush you like he does on the Nintendo. Lastly, in the arcade, there is no stage 7 boss. You run right into the alien red falcon lair. In the NES version, you have to break the lock on the door while avoiding enemies and turret fire. Seven. While playing the arcade version, you'll notice that the victory jingle doesn't play between stages, just after beating the two Corridor stage bosses. That's disappointing to me because that jingle rocks. Eight. The explosion on the bridge in stage one actually kills you on the arcade, rather than just dumping you in the water. Nine. In the NES game, when you play through stages 2 and 4, you always run forward until you reach the boss. In the arcade, the gameplay in these sections is essentially the same, but you have to turn corners after beating waves of enemies. Additionally, the bullets that fly towards you seem to have sort of a depth that doesn't happen in the NES. 
You can duck under or jump over bullets more easily in the arcade than you can on the Nintendo. Or at least, it was for me during my playthroughs. FINAL! The NES game has a small little ending scene where you fly away from the island in a helicopter. No such scene exists in the arcade, it simply fades to a credit scroll with little portraits for each developer. These portraits don't show up on the Nintendo. That's it! Ten differences between Contra on the Nintendo and Contra for the arcade. Um, both games play pretty damn similar, honestly. And uh, they were both a lot of fun to play through. Um, I would honestly think that the version you're going to like the best is the version you grew up playing or the version that you're more familiar with. Um, to me, they both they were both a lot of fun and I could, uh, I could really go either way. Um, this one's a little bit longer and a little bit, little bit meatier, I think, so I, I think maybe I would lean toward the NES version. Um, but uh, that's all I have. If you know of any other differences, why don't, why don't you leave a comment? Um, that should be it. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Later.